Welcome to the third of our virtual field trips. This virtual field trip has us in eastern Utah in a place near an old abandoned mining town called Dragon, Utah. Now, Dragon, Utah is just at the edge of the Book Cliffs region of Utah on the Colorado Plateau. Now, 5,700 feet above sea level is home to a variety of plant species, a lot of junipers, some of the similar desert type of plants that we've seen in our landscape. But you'll notice it does look quite a bit different from our last location. A lot of sagebrush here in where I'm walking and up you again see all of those junipers. Now this is an old track that is actually leads to a cistern which was used to carry water that I checked out hoping to find something cool but of course it was empty because many of these Utah towns have been picked over by all of the ghost town hunters and people who take uh, metal detectors and things like this to the, these properties. Now, I was able to find an old squirt bottle from 1940, and in big part because, well, the 1940s, but that was in large part because someone had been metal detecting and digging up holes, and there was an old squirt bottle. So, here I am against this mountain, and you see it's on first glance, it's similar grasses and sage and juniper. But one of the things that we'll look at that was up against this mountain, oh, there's that cistern, is that there are a Pentia species that you'll see here. And a little bit later in the year, there'll be quite a number of wildflowers in these rocky places with a lot of sun. Now you'll notice here at the bottom is a creosote that is not blooming, but you did see some of that beautiful blooming creosote. There was some more. A um, lot of debris. We saw a little piece of metal there, but most of this is just, just leftover bits and pieces from the mine. Okay, we're coming up on these little yellow flowers, and these are part of a pretty widespread and interesting species or, or genus of, of plants that are part of Brassicaceae or Cruciferae. Um, these are bladder pods, Viceria. Now, this king bladder pod, uh, I didn't actually expect to find in this location but they, they do exist here. And there's a few things as we go through a keying that will explain why. Uh, some of it has to do with the floral parts as well as the structures of the leaves. Uh, on a separate video, there will be keying of this. So, and it grew in communities where there would be several of the, these plants next to one another. Uh, they like some protection from rocks. Um, and you can see there's a lot of green foliage coming up that is just about to bloom that I'm not going to talk about or identify, but was was just was really close. So I'm walking up this canyon and also found something that's a western Colorado. Oh, actually, I forgot. I came across this member of Baraginaceae and thought it was one thing at first, but after keying it out, yeah, I decided it was likely something else. Uh, I, if Dr. Harris watches this and he tells me I'm wrong, that's okay. But I will we'll key out there, a video of this. I'll, I'll come out and we'll see. It's 
a genus that's related to a genus that's pretty hard to determine the species on. So mostly I'll just be going to genus with the keying, but I'm pretty sure this species is correct. So this canyon, well, I'm actually in a riverbed that goes up a canyon, and I would imagine there's a waterfall type of situation at other times of the year. Oh, looks like I found a lizard. Is that a side watch lizard? I think there's a few times where I stop to, to smell the roses here when finding a lizard. Uh, I'm sure that Josh knows exactly what this lizard is. I love lizards, but I'm more into snakes and turtles. Anyways, coming up this, it actually is a would be a, probably a waterfall at times of the year, or at least be, be coming down pretty good if, if water does run through it. I found this was a mustard that we're gonna look at that I hadn't actually found before because it's the it's what I was talking about earlier that's thanks waffle it's typically a western Colorado and this is actually an area of the state I hadn't been to before now so anyways it's a member of the genus Philopodiopsis, uh, I believe is how it's pronounced a little bit later on I'll, I'll go through and identify it more but you can see they're a, they're a mustard and they, they come up in, in this area, sometimes it's a single stalk uh, with the basal rosette, but generally there's, there's multiples. Now, you s just saw a little bit more of that bladder pod, and that was, that was probably the most common species I found, but as you can see, this climbs in elevation quite a bit, and I encountered these similar species, the, this mustard and the bladder pod, and members of Boraginaceae coming up through here and little else. So I'll, I'll walk through, that was blooming. Obviously there's a lot of plant life here and you, you can see that there's quite a few species that were blooming or were about to bloom, excuse me, but hadn't begun to yet. So this right here, for example, may be a member of the genus I previously identified or it may be in Cryptantha, which is pretty close, still in Baraginaceae, but has some of the similar, similar signs. I didn't collect this particular flower and key it out, so I, I don't know for sure. But I got almost to the top before I realized I had more places to visit and was starting to get tired carrying my camera gear. Besides waffle, I decided to be distracted by a rabbit. promised you some cactus. This is a Punch Aranacea and would have a very, very pronounced pink flower. I mean, mag magenta, I don't know, is that a color that you would use to describe this flower? It's, it's very bright pink. So, came down through this wash that I'm standing in now and started to be pretty difficult to, to walk through. But I did encounter more of the bladder pods. 
and coming up here I actually actually finally found some more of this this mustard I do a dissection of this in an upcoming dissection video and I was really excited to find out what this was because I hadn't yet gone through it so again here we have more of this Mojave prickly pear and this at first you don't notice it because it's very low prostrate like that but pretty soon you find that it is it is everywhere that there is nice drainage and generally some kind of cover now you can sort of see a the outline back there you could see of some processing facility with some gilsonite now that space that's carved out of the mountain there you can see the the crack there that's actually part of the old dragon mine here they mined Gilsonite, it's sometimes called the black dragon mine. And Gilsonite is a bitumen, it's a naturally occurring asphalt that is mined here, mostly in Uinta County and some in western Colorado. And this is just across, oh, excuse me, no, this is the same seam seam. And you are actually able to, up over this rise, there's a building and some of the active mine that you could have gone into before they put up a fence there's a brand new piece of fence there so uh, but then there's a across the street there's a place where you could just walk and fall in now this is at the mouth of, of Dragon Canyon and this is the site where the general store sat a lot of residences for the workers and there were that this town was actually a, a thriving town that existed from about 1904 to 1939. And it actually ended when, unfortunately, the railway spur was ended. Now, there were, and we'll see some cabins that still existed. Those cabins were typically built into the ground and had a, only a short rise above the ground uh, for temperatures as well as uh, protection and easy, ease of building. And as we walk through, here, here's an example. This was a, a more of, a, of an above ground timber structure that was more conventional. And right about where Waffle is, we're gonna find one of my most favorite flowers. And there were, several of these up a, another canyon I hiked but unfortunately I did not have my camera with me but fortunately I found one right here This is Larkspur, and actually in the floriculture industry, plants that looks like, look like this are referred to as delphinium, and Larkspur is used to refer to a commercially available bread uh, species. So you see some old cattle corral back there behind the dog. Back here near the general store, and in that brush to the right, it, it, there are dozens of structures that have fallen over or fallen in, and that those include, like I said, the general store residences. And there are stoves and all sorts of pieces that were available there, and I'm pretty sure this is when I found another lizard. Looks like it's the same, possibly side blotch, but but I don't actually know. I don't know if I got close enough to, to find again. I'm sure Josh knows. So there's a 
bladder pod there at the base of this paintbrush. And there were paintbrush here as well as down in Washington County. And I thought this was interesting being able to see these two species right here close to one another. And just up the mountain a little bit, I found uh, something I'm, I'm excited about. But this right here is, looks like something I, I did not collect and don't have something to key through, but it was a member of Brassicase E. Uh, this is sand verbena, and it did smell quite lovely. We'll get a nice close-up view, and we actually go through and key this in an upcoming video. This was a storage structure, probably a hay house or or just a, a basically a shed for an underground building that we'll look at. It was partially caved in this underground building, so you don't quite get to see what I mean, but we get a little view that you walk down under the earth. And I actually found a porcelain, a, a turn of the century porcelain doll's arm here. Believe it or not, this little area of town, or of of Utah, Dragon, had almost 500 people uh, by 1930. Now, across the road there, they had a place for animals. Uh, there were sheep shearing pens, there was two saloons, a barber shop, bo boarding houses, there was a warehouse, a depot. There was all sorts going on here until the, until the railroad shut the spur down, and it vanished almost overnight. So growing right here at the base of this rock, this member of Asteraceae, uh, known as a Townsendia, I found, and they're these beautiful little white composite flowers, and uh, they have that pink color on some of the floral parts. So, trying to get a little bit more of that Apunchi there. My dog somehow was able to avoid stepping on every cactus, but every time he tried to film them, he walked right past them. So you can see across this little valley there is another cabin, and actually this whole entire space had several cabins. You'll see to the left there is actually some historical markers with some information about Dragon. Now, it hadn't been totally kept up, and there was a lot of stuff sort of left there, but one of the things that was neat was there was a sidewalk, probably the original sidewalk that walked to this little cabin here. And I know this is a Florida, Utah class, but on one hand, I love old ghost towns and mining towns and the history of Utah. And the other thing is, is that I, I feel like this hopefully gives you guys some of the experience of being in some of these places because that's part of finding flowers and I hope that you, when you go out and you look for opportunities to find plants that you go to places that you find interesting because there are plants everywhere. So this is spiny phlox and phlox are very early in some of my practice videos where I was getting the hang of some things, they're some of the first plants I'm generally able to find. They're white, typically. Well, there's a little bit of a purple one we'll look at in a minute. Um, this is actually one of my favorite plants, though. This is Scarlet Gilead. Very distinct flower. We'll key through this. And I think that you'll probably find some because they're pretty widespread. And this is that purple phlox. I did not collect this. I was hiking and I had my phone. And I did not collect this. And so I don't know what it is. This is Fremont's Beard Tongue, a penstemon, a member of Scrofulariaceae. And they are, this is as I was driving out of the canyon, so a little bit, or excuse me, out of the area, it's a little bit higher elevation. 
and these were out overlooking a valley in this rocky terrain and there were many of them all together just right off of that dirt road I was on. All right, this has been our trip and I hope that you've enjoyed it and look forward to taking you some more places throughout this beautiful state. Good luck out there with your own plant collections and don't forget you can always reach out to any of us if you need any help.